Howdy folks, uh, aquaponics update for 2020. Uh, got some tough stuff to talk about, a little bit of wander around chat. Uh, you can hear water going behind me. Um, what you're hearing is the sump back there. Yeah, there, here we are. Uh, got a filtration system set up, which is this. Um, so starting to filter water through the sump. Um, basically taking advantage of the, the melt from uh, some snow and stuff that was in the sump and some of the organic material that was already captured there. So uh, using that to generate what I want. Figured I'd do a quick update uh, and post it for YouTube and for... Um, <sighs> Denny the Rooster says hello, wants to remind you that he's still around. <laughs> Five, six years going strong, something like that, yeah. Anyway, um, so the idea, I just wanted to talk about last year actually, and then a little bit about this year, and we'll take a look around, we'll do some stuff, and yeah. So last year was a bit of a mess. Um, you'll notice my, uh, my 2019 playlist just kind of stops. So what happened was that, I make it, I talk about it, I think in one of my videos in 2019, was that we had some soap get into the system. Uh, and the soap damaged a lot of the gills in the fish. So, uh, didn't actually have, I think we only had two or three fatalities, uh, which is still about a 10% kill. Think about that. Um, but it wasn't awful. But what it did was it left the whole system in a very precarious kind of condition. Uh, when soap gets into a system, for those of you who don't know what soap does, soap digests or liquidizes, the technical term is saponifici, sap, 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 anyway, make it, yeah, turns to sludge fat molecules. That's what, that's what soap does. So the reason it cleans up your dishes and stuff is that a lot of organic material is essentially exposed fats. So your oil that you use for cooking is an exposed fat. So you, you know, good old fashioned soap, breaks down the fat, turns it, turns it to a, uh, a less sticky liquid, and water can carry it away. Yay! The problem is the gills in fish are largely fatty tissue. So what happens is it will either destroy or damage the, um, the, the breathing apparatus of the fish. Um, that's bad. So like I said, straight up killed three. Um, but the other thing it did is that a lot of the beneficial biology that's in a fish, into an aquaponics system, is essentially, um, you know, single-celled organisms who are basically, a, 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 you know, a, a bubble, a bubble of, of complex materials, including fats, um, and the soap just straight up destroyed them. So what it did was functionally is it sort of reset the chemistry on the system by almost six months. Uh, sorry, six weeks. So that caused a whole bunch of other knock-on problems. Um, so, okay, we got through that, um, and then, just to make things more awkward, uh, we actually had an okay summer, um, the fish were growing okay, um, and then we had a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, straight up hurricane, uh, depending which way you want to pronounce it, hurricane, hurricane, Big, big monster storm, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that basically crippled up the system. Uh, and we had um, power outage, um, and because of a whole bunch of blown in organic material, um, the water quality fouled. Uh, I was so stressed about the storm itself and what was going on around the house at the time that I didn't realize that we'd lost air. Um, and so by the time I went out to check on the fish, the tank was a write-off. Um, so that was pretty rough. Uh, basically lost the, um, uh, pretty much lost the whole, uh, the whole crop in terms of fish. So that's rough. Um, in con addition to that, I made a bunch of changes to the system last year that, um, based on you know advice and suggestions and designs from some pretty impressive folks on YouTube who I figured knew more than I did. It turns out their advice works really well for them. For whatever reason, it didn't work well for me. Uh, we had 
part of aquaponics is math. And we got into a problem where trying to make my system fit the way they like to do business meant that I, that I just had too much water going the wrong way. I didn't have enough water moving other places. And it just caused a whole bunch of other problems where we actually had lost a couple of fish across the, cross, uh, across the course of the summer um, because of uh, toxic, uh, toxic uh, effluent, back, basically back flooding uh, into the fish tank. So last summer was hard. Um, I was pretty grumpy. Let's just use that phrase. I was pretty grumpy um, by the time everything washed out. On the vegetable side of things, we produced pretty much record crops of everything. Hang on. Harley going by. Um, we pretty much produced record crops of everything. We grew nasturtiums, which we hadn't done before, discovered those things are delicious, uh, sort of a peppery spice leaf uh, to go into your, uh, to go into salads. We did more tomatoes than we had done. Just everything. Um, well, actually, you know, over the summer, we ate r a lot of good greens, really rich food, really super tasty, all the stuff I've come to expect of an aquaponics. And then, yeah, basically, the hurricane broke the whole damn thing. <laughs> So, I was, yeah, I mean, I was, let's just use the phrase crushed. Um, you know, I was pretty angry. I was pretty upset. I was pretty mad. I was pretty disappointed. Um, just all that mixed mass of emotions that goes into building something and then um, losing it. You know, and none of, I didn't, the only thing I can honestly say I did wrong was not following my instincts, was listening to other people claim, who seemed to figure they knew better than I did only to find out that maybe what they're talking about works well for them, but just wasn't going to work for me. So, uh, what I've done uh, is I've made some more changes to the system, and we'll talk about that, what it is I want to build, what is I'm in the process of building, how it is things are going to work this year. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this is going to be an interesting year. We're not going to be able to do trout this year. Um, mostly because this is the year of COVID, 2020. Uh, for those of you following along with global events, uh, it turns out pandemics are kind of hard on doing things like importing livestock. So right now, Prince Edward Island, which is where I'm at, um, has got a ban on importing livestock. Um, hang on a second, I'll introduce you to the chickens here. There we go. There's some of the flock. Right? Gonna get some curious looks. They wanna know what the stick's for. Um, so yeah, um, the idea, well, I'll give you a little bit of a tour about what I'm gonna get into here in a little bit. Um, hang on a second, I'll show you something else. So that's a bunch of larch. Uh, Chrissy wants to get into bonsai, so we're gonna, she's gonna try that with some larch we've rescued from a neighbor property. But for the aquaponics, uh, I'm going to go back to a couple of to an earlier revision of the system, if you will. I'm going to hit the undo button on a few changes I made for last year that just turned out not to work. Um, and the idea, you know, the broken tree behind me here is all hurricane damage. Right, all that that all came down, wrecked that building behind me over there. We got mostly lucky, except for the aquaponics, really. It's really. So let's do the time warp. Yeah, okay. So what happened was the battery on my phone ran out. I'm recording this on my iPhone. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so probably going to be a little bit of discontinuity there. Um, obviously enough, it's about four hours later in the day. Uh, the lighting is different, blah, blah. The chickens are still yelling, though. So, you know, there's some continuity there. Uh, so, like I was saying... Um, Last season was kind of a mess. Uh, we did a great job with the vegetables. We didn't, the, the fish were a disaster. Um, I found it really discouraging. Um, really did, just didn't want to talk about it, honestly. Um, I, I kind of took it personally. And I mean, you know, I've got friends in farming at various scales. You know, it's just, it's part of the game. You, you have a bad year every once in a while. Sometimes that's just the way it plays out. 
The rest of the year around here actually went pretty well. Uh, we actually got off relatively easy with that hurricane. Um, some minor damage to one building, and honestly, after that, it was mostly just a lot of firewood. Which, just essentially, trees we'd been planning on taking down came down, and they fell down in the most advantageous way we could have hoped for. So, yeah, okay. Um, so we shut the system down at the end of this last season, and I've been planning some changes ever since. One of the biggest problems I got into was that um, because I had sunk the sump into the ground as part of last year, I don't know if I can't remember if I mentioned it in one of my videos, I had to increase my pump size. Because I increased the pump size, suddenly what was happening was I could put more water into the fish tank than I could take out at gravity in a piece of one inch pipe. And so we had all kinds of, of water retention issues, uh, water speed of flow issues. I solved a couple of them using essentially air, airlift pumps. You know, you put a flange at the bottom of a, of a piece of one inch, you drop an air stone into that flange, you let it bubble the water up, and you can basically, you know, add 30 to 50 percent on your water flow. So that fixed a lot of the issues, but it was just, I never trusted the system. That was my issue. And as you know, if you've been following me since the beginning of this mad discussion, one of those things I'm, I'm you know, I, I rant about from time to time is the concept of walk away safe. You know, it's it's a term that came or what it started out with nuclear war actors. If you can't turn your back on it, you can't use it. Um, so you need a system that if you walk away from it, if you go away for a weekend, that the system doesn't do something stupid. Um, and inherently, the design I had before clearly, you know, we we lost power for 24 hours, and that was enough to kill most of the fish. As I say, those fish were already injured; they'd already taken substantial uh, damage to their gills because of the soap at the beginning of the season. So. It was sort of, you know, it's entirely likely that if um, the fish had been healthier, they could have survived. But the power outage, um, you know, we, had, we were out of power here for north of 24, I think we were up, I think it was 24 hours, over 24 hours. So by the time the lights came on, I realized that I needed to get a generator operational because the power went out late in the evening and I'll deal with it in the morning. And then I realized, much to my horror, that what had really happened is that overnight there had been 12, 14 hours, no air going into the pump, into any of the t any of the system. Yeah, okay, that's bad. Um, so there we are. That's how we got there. So I want to talk about now. I'll take you up. We'll take a look at the fish at the uh, the system I'm building now, um, and what changes I've made to lessons learned. What is it I'm fixing? So because the pump is now too big, um, I've gone. Um, I've gone to a two inch system. I could have gotten away with one and a half inch pipe, but the difference in the perch in the price for the amount of piping I was gonna to have to buy would have been about a hundred about yeah, hundred dollars on four hundred dollars. Um the problem is is if I add one more fish tank onto the system, which is something we've already talked about doing, I need a bigger pump. And if I do that, well now suddenly that one and a half inch is no good. So I said, screw it, I'll just spend the extra money and uh, I'll upgrade to two inch. Um, that's 6,000 gallons per hour. Um, that's a big system. Um, if I'm doing 6,000 gallons per hour, it means I've got four IBC totes worth of fish. Um, well, six. Six IBC totes worth of fish. <laughs> um, you know, and that'll be a good problem to have at that point. You know, I'll be, that, that, that's what a two inch pipe will give me. Um, it's 6,000 gallons, 6, gallons, uh, I think, at gravity. So let's flip the camera around and I'll point out to you what it is I'm trying to do here. Let's see. All right, so start over here. We'll walk around, we'll talk. This is the grow bed that last year I had uh, a planter stuck up in the middle. And what I did is I brought pipe across the top, brought water down, flooded it down, came into here. And over here I had, um, uh, I had originally planned on doing a fl uh, floating raft bed and some Dutch buckets, and then ultimately it was going to terminate over there. Because of uh, some foolishness that went on money-wise, that couldn't be done, so I did some experimentation, but essentially last year we went from there pretty much straight over there and back in. The big changes are going to be more visible from over here. So this is what I'm up to now. Um, sun's behind, so apologize for the shadows. So that's a 2-inch 50 mil pipe going out through the side there. Um, the That's an overflow skim so that if if this system starts backing water up, I'm gonna start pulling water in off the surface directly. That will seal that pipe 
and it will suddenly run as a siphon, and that will slug um, a lot of water real fast. Let's just do, I can't remember the numbers right now. I don't have them handy. Um, I'm using a pair of 45s to generate a very long curve. The reason is, is because that generates half as much friction uh, on the water as a 90 degree. It's a little bit over insurance. It keeps the water flow nice and fast. And down the bottom, you can see I've got a flange there. It's, it's mostly sitting straight on the bottom. So it goes from a four inch, 100 millimeter down to a two inch, 50 millimeter. And what that does is suck, it's a very wide, constant pressure that gets pulled up into this pipe and it goes out the side of the tank over there. So the idea is water level in this tank should be about here. If there's a lot of water that comes into the tank in a hurry because of the flood and drain pipes, maybe this will bury this pipe, but it should never be, you know, should never be any, any higher than about the top of that pipe. Take a look around here. So what happens is I come out of the side of this tank. I've got a ball valve there in case I need to isolate the fish tank for some reason. I come again, sweep, sweep. There I've got a 90 just by necessity, but I, here I'm going down at a 45 degree angle to keep water speed up. So I slam into that corner. That's not ideal, but it'll do. I come into here, a pair of 45s that go straight to the bottom of the tank. And you can see there's an, a 45 there, and there's another one if I move the camera over, you can see. So what that does is creates a clockwise flow at the bottom of the tank. So all of the energy of the water coming down that pipe, straight and hidden straight to the bottom of the tank, gets converted into radial energy. And what that does is it makes it hard for the sediment that's being carried, the fish waste, to want to go upwards. Because all of the energy is always going around and gravity is pulling down. So it's already losing the battle with gravity. Um, the old one inch 25 mil stuff, I've just got it stubbed and capped. That's what it looks like on the inside of the tank. So you can see there's some caps, but you'll see right there, I've got a ball valve and that's going to, you know, if you take a look, there's an elbow down there. And the idea is that lets me, if there's solid waste that starts accumulating on the bottom of the tank, just crack that valve open, snap a hose onto it and I can pipe it out to my, to my, uh, to my bushes and stuff. So... Here, I've got a piece of 50 mil tilted at an angle, and that's going to essentially be a surface skimmer. I need to put a filter cap on that, but for now, it's a placeholder. Don't have to worry about fish, about fish and garbage getting pulled through just yet. That comes out to that piece of 50 mil. And then into the next bucket. Same idea. We drive straight to the bottom. We've got a, a spin bottom that's going to move water around. I've got a drain line there. And again, we come up to what's going to be a surface skimmer. So we're going to take water off the top. What's going to be in this tank is a bunch of brushes. They're um, about 100 millimeters across, about 300 millimeters or 30 centimeters a foot long. And those are going to be secured here. So as material starts swirling around the surface, if anything sort of crawls back up, it gets caught up in those brushes. And then that water is there for basically there's no way for the particulate to get into the next tank. So it goes out that pipe, across, into the next tank. Let's go take a look at that. So this is what it looks like on the other side. Again, 50 mil, 2 inch, pair of 45s, straight to the bottom of the tank. And again, another spin head. So what I haven't done yet is put the return line, and that's basically going to go straight out there, probably about here. And so, and then that's going to come out and go, so it'll come out of the side of the tank here and drop down and push water in there. I'm probably going to rig up a spray bar so that water will be kind of tossed out over a wide fan over that entire width of the tank. So that's the idea. And again, I got a 25 mil one inch down the bottom to pull any solid material off. Now this tank here is kind of special, this last one. Um, hang on a second, not very good at the camera work here. This tank here is kind of special. So what's going to go into it is a bunch of bottle caps and what's called K1 media. I'll show you what that looks like. It's this stuff. So you can see that down the bottom of the jar there. 
So yeah, so bottle caps and this grid material. And the idea is all of this is neutrally buoyant and it has a huge surface area. If you look real close, you can see the edge of that's kind of corrugated. Um, and the idea is that gives the beneficial bacteria that the system that digests all the fish waste a huge area to live on. And so that stuff is going to be in suspension in the water in this tank, which is so that tank. Um, and there's going to be a couple air so stones in the bottom of that boiling the, the heck out of that tank. So generate, putting a tremendous amount of oxygen in the, in the water. That gives an ideal envir environment for aerobic biology to run and pretty much nixes the, the, the hope of anaerobic uh, to run. So this tank here may be anaerobic. That tank probably will be anaerobic. This tank will convert all of the anaerobic byproduct into aerobic byproduct, and that's basically called plant food. So that's how that works. There's gonna be, like I say, a couple air stones and air line into that. 75 liters, th about 30 liters a minute air being blown into that 200 liter tank, just as an, exp as an idea. Um, so over in the corner there, what I got is uh, my pump is, that's a um, stainless steel drum that was, uh, we got salvage and repurposed uh, uh, from scrap. Uh, I took a circular uh, cir a disc cutter, chopped a hole in the top of it. My pump is in the middle of that. So that screen gives a huge area to pre-filter all the large debris coming in. So right now, this is the other half of the filtration system. So right, so <coughs> this is basically just conditioning the water. Um, so I'm pulling water into this pipe. It goes up and into that filter there, the, the black bin. The blue one on top is just sitting there. I'll open up the black bin in a second. And then you can see there's these two lines coming back, pouring water in. So when this system's in production, this T here is actually going to go straight up. And I'll show you where that's going to go. So it's got a little spray, spritz of water coming out of it now, you can see it. So that's actually going to go straight up to here. And then this will be, of course, where the grow, uh, the, the grow pipes uh, with the net pots sit. So all that water comes up here, runs out that way. Um, and then some of that water also then runs the whole length of the system to go out over that arch. So some of the water is going to be diverted out to this uh, mechanical filter. I'll show you the inside of that. And then the bulk of the water, when the system is all plumbed up, like 90% of the water goes up here and that way to provide water for the fish tank. One sec here. All right. So this is just a, essentially a, a, hardware, a hardware tote. So this, what I've got in here, and I'll post some pictures on my blog site eventually, is uh, layers of material, you can see down the edge there, um, egg carton light diffuser, and then uh, a more coarse filter material. And I've got three layers, so uh, a very coarse, a medium, and a fine, each of them separated by a layer of this 10 millimeter thick uh, uh, egg crate light diffuser. And then at the very bottom, I've got a bunch of polyfill, so that there's essentially a, bio a biology reserve down the bottom that's always wet so that this is sort of, I'm using this system to clean up that water in the sump. That's all good rainwater, that's all snow melt. So I want to keep that. But the idea here is that the, um, I'm already sort of establishing my biology for the system in spite of not really having any fish in. I'm just consuming um, all of the, the organic material that's in the system, feeding it to the beneficial bacteria which you're taking up. These filters were used last year so they're going to be okay for, for material this year. Um, and that's it. So that's my uh, that's the system as it sits now. Uh, I'll do another update video um, as we go and as things get bigger. I got a bunch of goldfish uh, we're going to put into the sump this week. Uh, we're going to start out with a half dozen and then we're going to put 20 more in. And that'll be my biology jump start. We can't get trout this year, as I said, because of the import bans. So that's uh, where we're at. So we're going to run the system on goldfish this year. Uh, the goldfish will get kept for an indoor aquarium over the winter. Um, and we'll see where it goes. Um, yeah. 
So, all right. So that's it for today, folks. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll post this up to YouTube probably tomorrow because I'm going to have to stitch some videos together and clean a couple things up. But I just wanted to give, uh, eh, it's taken me a little while to just kind of feel good enough about the whole situation and want to talk about it. So like I say, I kind of, kind of took last year personally the way it all wor worked out at the end. I felt I felt a lot more responsible probably than I was. So anyway, don't want to dwell on that. We're moving forward. I'm looking forward to doing seeing how the system runs this year. Uh, producing a whole bunch of good vegetable greens. Um, you know, as I say, we're in the we're in the year of COVID, so fresh vegetables off the property is one less trip to the grocery store. It makes it easier for folks who don't have a choice. There's more stuff on the, you know, for folks who can't do this at home, it means I'm one less person in the supply chain. That's that'll help out in a small way on the bigger picture. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, I expect the next big update will be after we've got fish in the system, and basically we got all of the fish in the in the sump, and we got water moving end to end. I'm hoping that's next weekend, so sometime probably Sunday, Monday, you should see another video. Take care of yourselves. I hope you're I hope you're looking forward to your own growing seasons. I hope what I'm doing here helps you feel like you can do this. Anybody can do this. If you got questions, shout out shout out to me on email or in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, let's get growing. Bye-bye.